Greetings, it's Dr. Burnett, publisher and pusher. The all body place of encouragement, cultural empowerment. Weekly, she'll engage conversations with entrepreneurs and creatives. And these insightful interviews are designed to help us build our businesses, respective brands, ourselves, and to hopefully propel us to that next level of greatness. Big Boss. So with no time to waste time, it's officially go time. Hi, everyone. It is another beautiful week, and we thank the Lord that we are on the right side of the dirt uh, today. And let me tell you, Dr. Annette Publishing Pusher Podcast is doing extremely well. This is our fourth season. We took a little break. So let me tell you about the little break. <laughs> it was more than a little break for some people, but it was a couple of years break. But sometimes we need to step back before we step forward. So when I ended the podcast, I ended on that note with a message that said, this was season three, episode 75, that said, stepping back. And I talked about sometimes, it's not that you're stopping, it's not that you're ending it, but sometimes we just need to step back so that we can move forward. Now, two years passed, people, but that's okay. I was still productive during that time. So on the new season, my first one, my first episode was called Stepping Forward forward because we'd already stepped back and now it was time to push forward. So make sure you go back and you listen to the first episode, listen to all of the episodes, even this one again. So start here and then go back to the first and then go through all of them. But we have some really powerful chats because I don't want to call it interviews. I'll ask some questions, but I really want it to be like when Janice and I saw each other earlier this year and we had the opportunity to see each other face to face and to dialogue. It was just general, you know, sisters having a little chit chat. So that's what we are doing here as well. So make sure you follow the podcast. You can also, I have a plethora of books available to you. Janice going to talk about her book and maybe some other stuff tonight too, y'all. But we have some great resources. You can always go to Jetne Publishing, J-A-T-N-E Publishing.org. Look around, send me an email, get on my mailing list so that once we have some things going on, we can let you know about it. So let us move to the meat of the matter on today. I want to introduce to you all, this is Janice Burton. The marriage mogul, everybody. Hi, Janice. Hey, how's everybody doing? Thank good you so much. For you. Yes, it's great yes, to be yes. here. <laughs> yes, it's good to be there. They said the old folks say it's good to be seen today. <laughs> That's right. It's good to be seen and heard. <laughs> so, I like to tell where I meet people at, if at all possible. I met Janice on, I consider it a wonderful platform called Clubhouse. Uh, over two years ago, we met on that platform. We were a part of some other rooms, exercise, walking, joy rooms, um, participating in those spots. We've moved on to some other things, but we've stayed connected to some of those people. And that's where I physically got to meet Janice was at the Experiencing Joy Conference in uh, March of this year. And I'm looking forward to a 2024 conference as well. Janice, again, welcome. Thank you. I know Janice a little bit about you because oh, we think we be knowing people, but we really, really don't. That's why we have to have these chit chats as we like to say. Janice, please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers on today. Thank you so much again, Dr. Annette, for having me here. It is such a pleasure and a joy to be on the podcast with you. And I just thank God for joining us together. I am Janice Burton. I am the marriage planning mogul. I coach, equip, and empower singles to have healthy relationships and to prepare for marriage. I am a child of God. I'm a daughter of God. I am created in God's image. I am an accountant and finance professional by profession, but my heart and passion is really with reaching out to singles and helping singles have healthy relationships and helping them to prepare for marriage. It is so important that um, that is done properly. 
and I can tell you a little bit more of my story later about how I got into this work. Thank you. I did, and and I I vaguely remembered that you were the finance and accounting person. <laughs> so listen, all of us need that person in our life. Okay, I don't care what kind of work you're doing and where you're working at. We need that person that know the numbers and can help us <laughs> do <something> legal. <laughs> So, finance and accounting, y'all remember that. Janice, tell us what made you want to write a book? What pressed you towards that? It's so interesting you asked that question, Dr. Annette, but uh, because all my life, actually, from a child to now, I have always loved writing. I have always loved, even in school, I loved writing papers where some people actually hated it. And I was actually going to major in English, but my school counselor advised me against it. And because she looked at my math scores and she said, no, you need to major in math or accounting or something. So I took her advice, but I have always loved the English language. I have always loved writing. I have always loved reading. And my mom, I saw my mom. Uh, my mom didn't have but a fifth grade education, but she loved to write and write letters. And I just, I guess I picked it up from her, but I've just always loved writing. And I had journals and journals and journals of just when thoughts come into my mind or when the Holy Spirit put something on my heart, I would write it down, write it down, write it down. I never knew what I was going to do with those writings. I just knew I loved to write. Well, I think that's the the first thing is to enjoy doing something that will make it a not necessarily easy, but a bit easier once you get into that process. Now, Janet yeah. said she this is something that she always enjoyed doing was writing. Now, just because you write doesn't mean you're going to become a book author, doesn't mean you'll publish anything. When we look at statistics, for instance, it tells us that if you ask the group of people, how many of you want to write a book? Probably eight out of 10 will say, yes, they want to have a book. But if you ask them how many of them are actually going to do the work, <laughs> you may get maybe That's different. One, you get a whole different answer, maybe one or two. When it comes to who actually does it, it's even less than or around that 1%. Y'all might be thinking that with all of these books out here, so many more people are writing these books. But when you look at the whole population, it's not as large a number writing books as we really think about. So Janice, you had that love for um, researching and reading, which is a wonderful thing because as we write, we need to make sure that we have our context correct. So research is very important. Now your book, tell us the name of your book. The title of my book is, it's a question, it's called Do I? That's the title of my book. And um, it, it really stemmed from my own experience as a married woman. I was married for 23 years and I woke up one morning and this was about nine years after my divorce. I woke up one morning and I was just reflecting on my life. I was reflecting on how did I get here? How, you know, and I just was reflecting on everything, my marriage, my life, uh, where I am in my career, where I was in my career. And I started thinking about my marriage, though, and I thought, how did I get here? And I just started thinking about all the things I wish I had known before I got married. At 22, I really didn't think about a lot, really. I just, you know, we were right out of college and we were in love and we had dated and he asked me to marry him. And I said, yes, we didn't put a lot of thought into it. We didn't put a lot of planning into it. And so really went into marriage kind of blindly, really, like a lot of people do. And I started reflecting on, man, I wish I had known this or I wish I had known that. And, and I I feel like the Holy Spirit prompted me to start writing down some of these things I wish I had known. When I started writing down these things I wish I had known, the intent was not to write a book. It was just I was writing because I like to write. And but as, as the days went on and as the weeks went on, I kept writing, I kept writing, I kept writing. And at one point, I thought about how much time, money and energy 
-hmm. we put into planning the wedding. And I started thinking about the wedding and all the money, the flowers, the food, the, you know, just, and I was like, wow, we spent a lot of money on that wedding and look where we ended up. And I said, a lot of people focus more on the I do rather than planning. And the Holy Spirit, I know it's the Holy Spirit said, turn that, turn that I do around and ask yourself some questions before you get married. Ask do I? And that's where the do I came from. It's just a reversal of the I do to really take some time before the I do to really think about some questions that we should really ask and answer and pray about and study and meditate upon before we say I do. So Janice, do you think um, that looking back, if you had known certain things that is a possibility um, that if you did marry the person, you may have stayed in that marriage maybe? Or do you think it was just destined to go in the direction that it went? I think about that sometimes. If I had known some of the things that I go over in my book, would I have still gotten married? And I, I don't know for sure, but I, I probably still would have gotten married and I, I don't know, I feel like it would have at least helped us be aware of some of the challenges, some of the issues, even some of the joys that people face in marriages. I think we would have been better equipped, which means we might have, we might have stayed together or we might have had a different mindset had we really taken the time to pray about it and, and plan and meditate and ask God some questions and really think about it more than we do. There's a possibility we could have, but I, I don't know, but I'm thinking we would have had a greater advantage than we had. <laughs> so, so in writing your book, it made you reflect back. It made you look back to some things and that was going to help you to prepare, hopefully prepare the way for some others coming along. I think you said you predominantly work with singles, people who are thinking about getting married. And is your focus more to connect with people before they say, um, uh, even the engagement? Yes, because definitely. That typically, even before an engagement, most people are already talking about it, even if it hasn't happened yet. That's right, Dr. Annette. And most people are talking about it, even as singles, before they get engaged, they talk about, I want to get married one day. I want to do this. I want to do that. So I try to get singles um, between the ages of 18 and I would say 27 when they're thinking about it and to really start just going over some questions in depth about um, marriage. And I do it in seven areas, spiritual, emotional, physical, finances, family, a friendship, fun, and we really take the time to delve into some of those. So I try to get them while they're single, but also if if a, if an engaged couple um, wants to go through the marriage planning, definitely I encourage that. And I encourage each partner to get their own book and go through the book individually first and then come together as a couple and go over the questions and compare answers. And there are some planning pages in the book. So it's really designed to help people before they say I do. That's real good, that's real good. So in respect to the book and the each person working on it, are you actually, like the coach that would take people through this process? Yes, absolutely. I am a dating and relationship coach and I take them through the process from beginning to end. If they are willing to, to do the work, if they are willing to come and show up to the appointments and I really ask people to take it seriously because marriage is such a serious commitment. It's a covenant relationship. And I want to work with people who are serious about it and serious about doing the work required to delve into these challenges and these issues and the planning. So, yes, absolutely. And that's real good because we know, even from our own experiences, as you said, and I can relate, we just didn't know. And now we know a whole lot looking back 
that yeah. we believe will be able to empower others to take a more focused direction. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So in respect to your, your marriage coaching, what type of challenges do you find mostly that you're going through with the people that you connect with? That's a great question, Dr. Annette. Some of the top challenges, of course, are effective, positive communication. That's a that's a really big, big, big issue. And part of that is really learning how to listen and not just listen with our ears, but also listen with our hearts when our partner is speaking. So the communication piece is, is very important. Um, also uh, talking about just your 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 background. It's it's important to know each other's background, your childhood. Were there any issues with um, trauma or money or communication or, you know, did you see your parents fighting or did you see them uh, hugging each other and being loving? So going back to your, your background, that is very important that couples do that as well. Of course, finances is a big one. You kind of have to know going in um, what what what's going to be coming in and what's going to be going out <laughs> so that you can meet your expenses and not just meet your expenses, but you want to start building wealth as a couple. You don't want to just uh, live paycheck to paycheck check and you definitely don't want to struggle financially. So that financial piece is a big one for a lot of couples. So if a say, say a couple was already married, Mm -hmm. And they were really thinking about, we're not going to be together any longer, but we're willing to see. Do you think that they're coming back like, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, that they're coming back to the drawing table or the table mm -hmm. that they never knew that there was available to them. So do you see how this could also benefit someone that's already in a marriage that maybe instead of walking away from it, they could find a way to invest wisely and stay in it? I do. I do think any married couple that want to go back and kind of start fresh and start from the beginning, putting together some plans and really talking about some of their challenges, it's, it's a great resource for them as well. That's a really great point. And I do um, say that in the book, that if you are married and you want to kind of refresh or, or renew, <laughs> reset, <laughs> this book is a great book to start um, because it starts out talking about covenant. That's, the, that's what it starts out talking about. And it goes all the way through. So it is an excellent resource for couples that want to kind of reset. Absolutely uh, would be a great resource for them to just sit down and go back to the drawing board and kind of say, let's start fresh. And let's see if we can work this out, if we understand some of the components and dynamics that we didn't understand when we got married. Yeah, that, that's good. I think um, all of us could use that. <laughs> <laughs> we all could use some refreshers, right? <laughs> you, you mean, both people got to be willing to do it, but it's available <laughs> to us. So yes. that's, 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 the great, that's the great thing to know. So have you done any um, conferences yet, Janice? As of uh, like relationship conferences, yes. I have I have not hosted any relationship conferences. I've just been a part of other conferences where I would come in and speak. Okay. But um, I love I love talking about relationships, dating, marriage, love. It is just such a passion of mine. And, you know, sometimes we don't understand why things happen the way they happen. But I'm glad that God put me on this path to help singles and engaged couples and even married couples to uh, really think about um, the work that it takes and the love that it takes, the commitment that it takes, the devotion that it takes, um, the compromise that it takes, the sacrifice that it takes. And, and it, it really can be a beautiful, marriage is a beautiful thing and God created it, he ordained it. And it just, you have to have two people who are willing to do the work. So I love to speak at conferences and workshops and hoping to do more of that in 2024. So you all are listening to this. You heard what she said. You see what she has to offer. 
you know that your ministry is in need of this. You have women. If it's a women's ministry, you have men. If it's a men's ministry, if it's a couple's ministry, you need this. I think it's so, what you offer, Janice, is so uh, refreshing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we need in our marriages also is to be refreshed. Why? Because yeah. it's old, it gets stale, it becomes mundane sometimes. Um, we become complacent sometimes. Yep. <laughs> For us to uh, get back to our second love, because the first love is the Lord, but our second love, which is that person, because it's easy to get away from it. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that sound about right, Janice? It, that sounds right on point, Dr. Ned. Sometimes in, in relationships and marriage, it, I mean, it's just normal to kind of go about your daily routine. You come in, you eat, you go to work, you do, and it, it becomes such a pattern and you don't even realize, couples don't realize they're just in this mundane pattern and they're not intentionally connecting and intentionally doing those things that it takes to not only not only survive, but to thrive in the marriage and to keep the marriage fresh and exhilarating and, and all of those things. But yeah, it, it takes intentionality. And sometimes um, they just get in this routine and it's very natural. So intentionality is something I talk about a lot in terms of staying connected and growing your connection every day. It, it really does have to be a daily intentional effort to you know, the physical touch and the having the conversations and the date nights and even doing the marriage audits where you sit down and you talk about what's going well, what's not going so well. Um, you know, what what do we need to incorporate? What do we need to kind of throw out? Um, what are some patterns we can change? What are some new um, uh, routines and traditions that we can bring into the marriage? What about marriage vision? Do we have a vision for the marriage? Do we have any marriage goals? to really sit down and be intentional about talking about those dynamics. So yeah, um, very important that couples are intentional about keeping that connection going and not just surviving, but thriving and growing and really keeping the relationship fulfilling and thrilling. I say the thrill shouldn't be gone. It should be growing. <laughs> <laughs> the, thrill, the thrill ain't gone, is what she said. The thrill ain't gone. <laughs> I think it was that B.B. King. <laughs> the thrill is gone. He said it's gone. But, we, but it ain't gone for us, okay? We, we got to keep it in there. We're going to use improper grammar and say it ain't gone, okay? I'm just... It ain't gone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but listen, everyone, this is something that you can invite Janice in to be a speaker. You can invite her in to do a workshop. You can uh, invite her in to be a part of what's going on to assist you. And she loves traveling y'all. So um, bring her in and bring her to the platform because she has some great content to, to share. Janice, do you think that in your writing, this particular book, that there are any particular um, themes that stand out in your book that would be um, more prominent than, than others? I think a recurring theme really is the connection. And I, I talk about that a lot, um, just keeping the spiritual connection, the emotional connection, of course, the physical connection. We haven't even talked about that part yet, <laughs> um, which is a big one. But staying connected, um, that's, a, that's a big re recurring theme for me. And the communication, um, the communication piece, keeping that positive, open, honest communication on a regular basis and being intentional about it, um, stopping, taking the time to stop and, and put the phone down and really have those conversations, you know, doing not just date nights, but daily connect connections. And it doesn't have to be a lot of hard stuff. It can be some very simple activities and exercises that couples can do on a daily basis to connect and even when you're tired or you've had a long day, still take 15, 30 minutes just to do some intentional conversation or, or some type of activity where you're sitting down and you're looking in each other's eyes and you're looking at each other's faces and you're actually communicating. So um, the communication is a big one and the connection. Those two I talk about a lot. And we know how important effective communication is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and staying committed in the process. It actually takes effort to stay committed to communicating. 
it it's it's a lot of work it's effort it's really effort and and it, they have you know couples have to be intentional about it um but yeah it's it's work and both people have to be in it so y'all listen to what she said both people <laughs> have to be in it it's not a one sided not one sided cuz one sided mean it's broken and if it's right. broken it may tear apart okay like <laughs> might literally be you won't be able to put it back together okay because yeah. you're not focusing on what needs to be done to build it so janice is the expert you all <laughs> she really is well, thank you so much <laughs> so janice in your efforts to to write your book and i know you you reflected in a lot of what you wrote and of course the bible is the foundation for what you've done. But did you have to go and dig into any other type of research for this? Or did you just know it based on your experiences? A lot of it was based on my experience, but I, I read a lot of psychology today. And um, I, le I read a lot of relationship books. And I did tap into some uh, of my favorite, uh, like Iyanla Van Zandt is one of my favorite uh, people to watch and listen to and read her materials. But most of it was, of course, the Bible and my experience. But yes, I did tap into some other resources for um, information. Um, absolutely. I think that's important that we use all resources that we can when we're writing. Um, just to get those other perspectives and to get the actual data and some of the stats that we need to be able to help people. Actually, in my book, I encourage couples to um, read the, uh, the love language book. Um, I encourage them to read that um, and to know each other's love languages. So, yeah, tapped into some other resources. That's good. Nothing like having resources because when you have them, you can always go back to them. You can't read it just one time. I'm gonna tell you, you just, right? You gotta, That's right. You got to You got to <laughs> dig dig into it. Janice, let me um, shift here. I want to talk about your writing process because this is publishing pusher, and we're talking about your our books when we come on. But we also had a process that we had to go through to get this book to fruition. Is there anything that you mm -hmm. can share with someone who is listening about your process that possibly could benefit them in developing theirs? Yes. And I will say my process, it took about two years because I, I would go through periods where I was writing, writing, writing. And then I would go through periods where I wasn't writing <laughs> and I would, I would just hit these roadblocks and but I would encourage people to just keep writing, even when you hit those uh, roadblocks. And Dr. Annette, I don't know what you call them when you what writer's block or they call is it. That that. What? I don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> my brain ain't blocked. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but I would encourage you to just keep picking up that pen, that paper, that laptop and keep writing, even if it's a paragraph, even if it's a, if it's a sentence. Um, just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing, write down your goals. What are your goals for this book? You know, if you want to have a timeline for when you want it published, when you want it finished, set those uh, timeline goals. Um, definitely connect with a publisher who can help you and guide you through. That is so necessary. I had never written a book. I started writing this book in 2018 and um, I connected with the publisher um, I used to live in Nashville, so I connected with a guy that I knew there and he kind of guided me through the process, but definitely have a professional that you're working with who can help guide you through and just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. You heard what she said. Keep writing. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean write every day. It's just right. being consistent, being consistent in whatever it is you're going to do. You yes. might be so busy that your writing day is Thursday. Between mm -hmm. this hour and that hour, the, the mm -hmm. thing is to be consistent with whatever window that you have given yourself. Because I can tell you from experience, it's easy to get off kilter. It's easy yeah. to let everything else get in the way of what we claim God told us to do. And he, you know, yep. he's pressing me to do it. And then you're looking at yourself saying, but I haven't done it. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I talked to myself a lot through that process. I had to encourage myself. I had to make myself get up and write. A lot of my writing I did on the weekends, but I had to just talk to myself and say, okay, Janice, you're going to do this today. 
Are you going to block out three hours? Are you going to block out two hours? Are you going to just block out a day? Um, stay in your PJs and just don't go anywhere. Don't talk to anybody. Let people know I'm writing today. I'm not ignoring you, but I'm writing this weekend. So a lot of it is encouraging yourself. And even as Janice said, you have to encourage yourself, but you also have to take some time for yourself because sometimes yes. we can be so engrossed in writing this book and getting it done that we forget about us. We forget about our mental stability. We forget about taking care of our physical bodies. We forget about our spiritual journey, okay? And we need that yeah. alignment so that when we do come back to it, guess what? We'll be more focused to do it. So even That's stepping true. away from it sometimes to take care of you, to take care yeah. of the me is very important. Yes. And that helps you refresh too. You might come back with a new perspective, some new thoughts on it. So that's very important, Dr. Nett, like you said. So while you were writing the book, Janice, did you find any major challenges? Um, I, I am, I don't say I'm a perfectionist, but I, for me, it was just the, my, the writing, I would write and then I would go back and change stuff. And I had to stop doing that. <laughs> um, well, why didn't you say it this way? Or you said it that way? And why don't you change? And I kept changing stuff and I had to stop doing that and just write and then let the professional do what the professionals do. That was that was my big thing. Just yeah, going back, changing, change, making changes, making changes, making changes. And that will that will wear you out and that will cause you a lot of anxiety, unnecessary anxiety. Um, so, yeah, I, I would not encourage anyone to do that. And I want you to know that listen to what she said. She it, she loves English. She loves writing. She she loves words. She, she that's a part of her passion. Right. But did you, did you hear her say that she still had to pass it on to somebody else? Why? Yes. Because sometimes we are just too close to our work. So even though yeah. we might be good at what we do, we're not the expert on that thing. That's and right. we have to have and be willing to invest in a real set of professional eyes to go over our work. Is that about right, Janice? That's right. That's right. Please work with the professional. Let the professionals and the experts do what they do. The publishing pusher, she knows what she's doing. Let her do what she does. She loves it and she's great at it. She's an expert at it. Let the professionals do what they do. <laughs> That's, that's yes, a good, good reminder to us in all areas. Let the professionals do what they do. Like she said, she's a finance and accounting girl. And even though mm -hmm. I learned all of that, that's just not my area. That's not my yeah. area. And so mm -hmm. I laugh because when I do my taxes, I do my own taxes. But, <laughs> but, but that's not my area. So once <laughs> I do it, I pay somebody to audit my taxes. To, okay, make sure that's good. I, to make sure that that's I good. did it right and that I didn't miss anything or that I oh, didn't oh, ask me some questions. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, like it's important to know who the experts are. That's right. You have to know who the experts are and you have to be willing to let them do what they do and be willing to invest in yourself. Um, this book was an investment. And uh, a lot of times we, we, we don't want to put the financial backing behind it, but you, you have to invest in yourself. Now, Janice, did you self-publish your book or did you go through a company? I just went through a company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought about self-publishing, but I didn't, I didn't know enough about it. And I didn't think I had the patience to do it or the expertise. <laughs> well, as far as the um, patience is very important because you will definitely need patience. Um, you don't necessarily need the expertise if you connect with a coach, but this comes back to you want to get it done and go in the right direction. Find a coach for that particular thing. If you're looking at marriage, thinking about marriage, you're going to call the who? The marriage planning mogul. <laughs> the marriage mogul. Okay. 
if you're looking to self-publish a book and you want to learn some things about laying that foundation, then you will call who? You'll call Dr. 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 <laughs> so you got to make sure you, you know, call the right people, connect with the right people. And Jan, as you talked about, you know, having a budget, it is so important to think about that. So how important was it for you? And how did you figure out what a budget was going to need, you were going to need for what you were going to do with this book? I, I did some research and I talked to the publisher um, and uh, just found out what it entails and how much it would cost to, uh, well, there were different packages. Uh, this package included this and some packages included the editing and some packages including the marketing. So you kind of have to know what you're willing to put into it or what you're willing to do and what you're willing to let the professionals do. So um, budgeting is very important. If you know you're going to write a book, put your money aside, set, set aside in your budget uh, money for your, your publishing, publishing your book, depending on if you self-publish or if you let a publisher do it, you have to do re your research to find out how much it's going to cost either way and plan for it. So even if you do it yourself and you're a self-publisher, it's still going to cost you something. Do, do, okay. not, do not think for a moment. <laughs> uh, somebody asked a question in, in, a, in a platform I was on and they said, um, asking people like, well, how much did you spend to get your book done as a self-publisher? And people mm -hmm. were saying, I, I did everything. I didn't spend any money. Uh, if I had to figure out how many hours I spent on all of the things that I had to do and I was putting an hourly figure on it, oh my gosh, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And so for those people, when you figured that out, you'd be like, okay, do I want to stress and tax myself out or am I exactly. willing to, because you're going to spend it one way or the other, whether it's right. headaches you got to go through, the long nights you got to go through, all of the uh, YouTube videos and this and that you got to go through trying to figure it out, or am I going to invest over here? Understanding, learning the process to understand it so I can know what kind of questions to ask, but still right. allow somebody else to get it together for me. But it's it's going to cost you something either way. Yeah, because a lot of people feel like if you self-publish, you're, you're saving money. But what Dr. Nett just said is so is so true. You're 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 spending money. You're spending your time. You're spending your energy and it's, it's costing you whether you think it's costing you or not. So, yeah, that's very important to take that into consideration. And even if it may not be the same amount, maybe, maybe you spent one person might have spent four thousand dollars for their project. It's still mm -hmm. probably going to cost you if you get a professional editor. Mm -hmm. Even if you only thing you pay for is a professional editor, it could be anywhere from about four fifty to maybe even a thousand, depending on what type of writer you are. You know how many times you got to go back for a review. So it could get pricey because editing is the number one most expensive item when it comes to. <laughs> publishing the book but what about the book cover do you can you do the book cover or are you going to go to canva and try to figure it out and spend 15 hours trying to figure it out or you're going to pay somebody 150 dollars and just let them do it and go back and forth with them and they figure it out you know you still got to do your own copyright you got to do your own library of congress number you got to do all of these things yourself yeah so it's not it as really, easy as people do sometimes that's right. That's right. You have to think about all of that. I, and I would encourage people to, to use a professional, <laughs> especially if you don't know what you're doing. Invest in invest in yourself, invest in yourself and use a professional. Listen to that. Invest in yourself and use a professional. Now, that goes all the way back to her being the marriage mogul. Mm -hmm. Invest in your upcoming marriage. Uh, mm -hmm. invest in understanding some things before you say, I do. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And then you may wind up saying, do I? And the answer might be no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's better to know that on the front end than after you done invested all of that money for all of that fancy wedding and paid $48 per plate 
and 20% yep. of the people don't show up that you paid for the place and all of this kind of stuff. And you just spend <laughs> thousands of dollars on a gown and you got music and you got this and that and that and this. And, and then you'd be like, wait a minute, I could have been a down payment on my house. On my house. Yes. Yes. That's another thing too. Um, people spend a lot of money on that wedding and then go live in an apartment or, and it's like, wow, can really think about that before you, before you, and I'm not saying not have a, a nice wedding, but really think about the money, the time and the energy that you're putting into that event. It's an event. And yes, you know, you want to have a nice, but think about really how much money you could be putting on your, on your home, which is uh, real estate is uh, an investment and it's a, you leave in legacy, you build in legacy. Um, so yeah, I, at, at 22, I had no idea. No one was talking about legacy. Nobody was talking about wealth building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's something the couples really, really, really need to take into consideration how much money they're investing in an event versus your, your life and your wealth. Y'all heard it from Janice Burton, <laughs> the marriage mogul. Okay. Yes. Pay attention. Pay attention. Up, get the books. Show up for the workshop. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Dr. Vanessa's Chat Podcast, brought to you by John A. Publishing. Be sure to stay tuned in for future conversations and engagements. Check out the website, jotnapublishing.org, and subscribe to this show on your preferred podcast app. Shout out to Donnie Five for the production. Be blessed and be a blessing. Peace.